What's going on, YouTube? It's Molly Knox Hill, and listen, we are here with cinematographer extraordinaire, Colombian cocaine dealer, Playboy model, the one and only Samuel Perry. Sam, how are you doing today? How are yeah. you? Yeah, yeah, I'm good, man. Um, yeah, it's another busy day in the office, but uh, yeah, cracking on, cracking on. Good to be here. I mean, the exciting thing is, you know, cracking on, but also looking back a little bit because you have a huge music video and project. I know so many hours edits planning execution has gone into this one money game three and you know what i don't want to waste any time for our viewers today i just want to dive into this one with you what better way to explore money game three when than with one of the minds behind it so do you just want to start off by talking about kind of the journey so far like where we were from money game one and filming that to where we are now with mg3 and just you know that <sighs> level through the years and, and where we've gotten to with this yeah, so Money Game Part 1 was a very different labor of love because mm. we didn't have anywhere near the budget we have now to make to make the video. Um, so it was a lot more like scraping at an empty barrel to kind of <laughs> really kind of work yeah. our socks off to kind of make something um, that for a very long time was probably the best thing I, I'd ever made. Um, and then so when we came to this one, it was just kind of, Wow, how can, the, how can the we top best it, thing you know? the best thing you've ever made. That's that's a big statement yeah. from you. Yeah. So so yeah, the first one was at the time the best we'd ever we'd ever made, and then this yeah for me feels like we topped it, um, which which is which is an amazing feeling, and um, yeah, just so glad it can be out there in the world for for people to see. Um, I guess differences between the first one and now this one and you and I talked about this a, a little bit like me being there and getting to watch you guys work mm. but prep time with the space being able to get into that space you know days before having a full walk through the the day of I mean how much did that stuff help with with prep obviously a lot bigger yeah. crew a lot more lighting a lot more budget going into this well, so many moving pieces yeah so well with the moving pieces there's so many more so there's so much more to organize there's so much to get your head around but with the first one, I think we did a lot more rehearsals. So right. we had multiple days in a car park walking it through. Hmm. Um, and like then we had multiple evenings of attempting to do it. Whereas this one, we were, were a lot more stricter on the amount of time. We had to get it right in this one day of filming. Um, we were, got in the space, started recording like, yeah, two days before. And then the day before, we were rigging all the lighting and doing rehearsals and then the day off we were rehearsing in the morning and then into shooting just before lunch um so yeah it was the turnaround was felt a lot quicker um and it would have been amazing to have even more time but that's always something that's always the case isn't yeah, it yeah as as we found on uh the the pot and the kettle um <laughs> more time is always always appreciated what certain um, certain people rushing to try to catch a train back while filming is still going on? What are, <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, so uh, you know it very well, but um, yeah, time is always a huge pressure. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I in in terms of uh, obviously build up for this one, nerves, anxiety. Did did you feel them? Were you really nervous on the day of the shoot compared um, to others, or was it kind of the same levels as it's always been? I think nerves weren't there, but I definitely felt the pressure. Um, mm. And definitely because I was covering so many bases, um, because even though we had a much bigger crew, we could have done with an even bigger one. Um, so it's like I'm looking over what the extras are doing, what they're like, making sure they're not messing up, but then also looking at Ren's performance and communicating with him. Mm. Um, and then also just being a cinematographer um, and just trying to keep on top of all the camera and lighting stuff. Um, which so it's like you're jug you're, it's a big juggling act um so uh how, yeah, there's a how, lot of pressure with that how in terms of crew and extras how many total people was was the number working on this project there's a lot so there was i think 13 extras wow uh five musicians mm -hmm. ren my camera team was one two three four people uh, and then my lighting team was another five. And then we had two runners, uh, four people in production uh, on the day helping with like 
food and things like that and then um post-production audio audio recording on the day too. Uh, audio and there was yeah, the other sound recordist he he absolutely smashed it yeah he um, did yeah i mean so. we'll, we're about to dive into this but the the sound of this is just amazing and just crystal clear and really shines through especially you know being in that space and appreciating how big that space is essentially yeah. we're we're on a farm in the middle of nowhere yeah. filming this video which just feels like its own kind of world and its own yeah. own universe going yeah, into it we had a few problems to do with that as well on the day and this i think yeah in terms of like what rendered in the post audio to kind of like bring that to life as well he's 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 just so good at it so um because there was points where we were, we were nearly even had to call the shoot off because it was raining and because you're in a tin box yeah it's like you can't film um so no yeah. and even even something simple as being able to uh to close the shutters i remember the the shutters yeah. breaking down electronically they had to be like manually cranked and just trying to deal with that of getting people in and out because what a lot of people don't appreciate is they're going to watch this video they're going to see it but it's like 150 motherfucking degrees in there i mean it is a yeah. sauna everybody is cooking like half of your crew is sat there with shirts off like <laughs> working and and dealing with it like for for ren to kind of like keep his composure with how hot and sticky it is in there and just everyone involved to deliver the level that they delivered i know that you know people are going to see this video and you're not going to know that you're not going to appreciate that so i just wanted to to shout yeah. out the the hot box that was man yeah yeah it was ridiculous um, you, the, you guys definitely turned up the heat for this video that's for sure yeah 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 that's uh that's a uh, understatement <laughs> yeah. oh yeah man so listen without further ado how about we just dive into this video and we'll kind of talk about it as we as we go through it yeah yeah man that sounds great all right without further ado this is a money game walkthrough with the man the myth the legend himself let's get it Vertigo. <laughs> wow. We'll stop right there. A Samuel and Ren video. Look at that. You're you're right there. <laughs> right there in the beginning. This is it. This is the, yeah. this is the the building of the legend right here. All right. A, a couple things I want to shout out coming in yeah. is I love your guys' opening shots to your video. I think you always do such a great job of creating just sort of this intrigue with it before we start to reveal this world and come back i mean you did it with uh money game one with the rope as it's sliding along the floor mm -hmm. you start off with you know just just the piano here and just showing off the the piano play so in terms of the camera movement right we're on the yeah. piano then we're going to come back then we know we're going to obviously do some cool 360 maneuvers and tricks and then work our way <laughs> to the wall i mean there's so much that goes into this. How do, how, how do you plot this out? Is this just a conversation between you and Ren? Do you listen to the track together and you kind of walk through it step by step? Or, or talk me through this. Yeah. So in terms of the blocking, like this one, the blocking is everything. Like mm. it's, we had a very much before we turned up to the location, we worked out where exactly we wanted the movements to be and where the key points of the camera had to be. And then when we we're in the space, then it's just bringing the camera up and kind of finding those frames and making sure that there's those moments that cinematically like really shine. And then it's like traveling between those moments. Um, and that's what we always did with money game as well. Like you get those mm. moments where you've stopped where you're side on and he's leaning on the bat or with the gun to the, to the head. Um, and we really wanted to kind of captivate moments like that again for this. Um, so it's like starting on the top because it's that beautiful moment of just the keys and the separation of where that shadow's drawn and is the first point and following the hands to then this side on beautiful point. And then it's catching the moment down the piano where you've got his reflection in the piano. Oh yeah. This and shot so right like, here. These, these are all the moments that, that yeah. So that we're is looking, beautiful. We're looking for moments like that. So it's like, with the blocking, we're finding the places and the moments that we really like love 
Hmm. And then it's working out how and when we reach those points. Director um, of photography needs a raise for this shot right here. I don't know. How... <laughs> By the way, this this piano, where did this piano come from? I mean, to get this yeah. to the farm in the first place, What? how was this sourced? Uh, yeah, we managed to get it through Yamaha. So they just provided us the piano because they just which is mad because it's a beautiful, wow. like 100 grand, beautiful piano that they brought in and got tuned for us and everything. And it's like, it's a beautiful piano. It just sounds amazing. And just oh, it did. when we weren't filming, Ren was just off like playing bits and bobs um, and Charlie as well. And they were just like, it's just exquisite to listen to them and play just, on such an amazing piano. Just making magic. All right, let's keep it rolling. Charlie. Actually, just quick pause. One thing I want to point out is I just love, I think you guys always have like a perfect sense of timing for revealing stuff, whether it's facial expressions or different mm. moments. And I think it was just like just the right pause on Charlie before we yeah. start to progress again. Like it's just got a great sense of like yeah, kind of waves rising, letting things breathe, letting the audience process it, and then carrying on from there. Yeah, and the rolling. timings, the timings of landing on him at that perfect point in the bar as well, and then following that through with him. It's like, yeah, yeah. 4 years old he was running round the pavements of his city 5 years old and his daddy told him listen here son you got to learn to be a man a man he works for what he wants 6 years old and he's reading writing top of the bunch and when he's 7 his progression made him student number 1 8 years old and he's praised for unusual I mean again just I love the gradual reveal of different areas you know the the audience still to this point does not have a sense of this space that we're that we're operating in and i love how everything kind of keeps you just on the edge of your toes i mean he's he's a great performer and just his camera presence is incredible one thing i wanted to touch on and i think i'm going to share a picture of this right now somewhere is can we please talk about the the rig like Thor's hammer for cinematographers that this is filmed on that that Bo is just rolling around with with just like big dick energy as he films this whole video. <laughs> yeah, so Bo's got a, a Steadicam rig with a. It's not a Trinity, but it's I can't remember what exact version it's called, which then has a motors in the head so that it can rotate. It's on this big stabilization system. Um, which is all vested up to kind of make these really beautiful, smooth motions. Um, it's like, yeah, it's an absolute monster bit of machinery. Um, yeah. I mean, yeah. He, he's hooked up to it like Octoman, just yeah. just the way that, I mean, that first off, like the, the workout that it takes just to operate this oh, thing. Yeah. He's, he's a magician and an absolute tank. Um, how, how long have you guys been working with, with Bo on, on projects in terms so, of bringing him in for it? Yeah, so the first video we brought him in for was uh, Money Game Part 1. So it's nice to have that full circle bringing wow. him back on for yeah. this. Um, he's improved so much uh, and has really grown like massively with the industry. 
Um, it's just always such a pleasure to work with him. He's such a another good creative cog in the works, and it just uh, the piece wouldn't be as good as it as it is without him. Um, yeah, he's 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 a pure magician. Um, Absolutely, a pure, a pure dancer. Yeah, um, I I think I really one thing I noticed about him he's like a consummate professional. Like you only had to tell him something once. And he was just so switched on for everything. And I think him yeah. and Ren had a great chemistry of like yeah. knowing where he needs to be for Ren and knowing how to set up shots and, and just getting this stuff. Because, you know, another thing we have to appreciate with the nature of these one take style videos is that it's on Ren, but there's a ton on the camera work as well. And and whoever's mm -hmm. filming that to get just the shots right and the angles and everything set up to execute on yeah. the day without missing it. Unusual grades nine, his parents paid for private school to nurture the flame. Ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, he ascends and ascends. His daddy tells him, son, money is the means to all ends. Fourteen, solving complex mathematic equations. At fifteen, IQ 150, still elevating. Sixteen, he develops complex solving. But I gotta ask you about this, because this was a... Uh... Yeah. Uh, discussion on the day of how, how did we solve this computer situation? Is that an iPad underneath of it, or wh how, how do we get the screen that we wanted there with the, uh, with the so numbers? That's all done VFX and done in post in the end. Oh, uh, so you we, did post in the end? We posted it. Um, yeah. Yeah. So it was, uh, we tried it with having an iPad in there, but due to the curved nature of the screen, we ended up not being able to, to use it. Um, because it stuck out too much and it was very visually obvious. So uh, Josh ended up smashing it um, and really put in the hours for us on this one. Oh, hell yeah. Um, Shout out to Josh as well. Is that a little money game figurine right there on the on the desk? Yeah, Where did yeah. that come from? Can that yeah. can that be purchased? Yeah, that's that's on the online stores available. There we go. Plug yeah. the store. Shout it out. Yeah. <laughs> he develops complex software code that detects weaknesses in cybersecurity protocols. Seventeen and he sells his vision, keeping the share. Not yet an adult, but he's practically a millionaire. Eighteen and his daddy tells him, "Now you're a man. This world don't give a damn about you, so take all that you can." Mm. Nineteen, he turns a profit, stocks and shares, invest in product. Twenty, double down the. Deposits 21, his income rockets 22. He learns the truth is just an obstacle to wealth. If you manipulate the data, then the lie will sell itself. 23, a life of luxury, crystal and cocaine. 24, he makes the Forbes list, they're applauding his name. 25, and his I mean, shout out to the server back there. I thought personally I was a better looking server, you know, like I got a boob job for the gig and everything, but I was fired on, on film day, so you know, it is, it is what it is. You win some, you lose some. Yeah, it happens. <laughs> Listen here, son. While you're sitting in that palace, that don't mean that you won. 26, a business shift. He switches business to arms. He's 27, dealing nuclear and shells in Iran. 28, inside the Senate, money bought him a seat. He's 29, a role of counsel in the president's suite. Now he's 30. His daddy says you're losing the race. You're just a servant to the king, not even in second place. 31, a big manoeuvre for his daddy's approval. Moving import over borders from the exports out of cuba 32 moving. you know it's so dope again like we're starting to realize how big this space is yeah can you talk a little bit about lighting this space and the challenges of this and and getting just this mood and this movie like vibe and quality from it again out of a one take video which yes. is like again it feels like a movie in a one take and visually, that's all on you guys. Obviously, a lot's going yeah. into the grade, but lighting so important. Go on. Yeah, it's it's everything. It's something that I've always loved and inspired the one shot kind of thing. It inspires me so much. So it's trying to have this consistent level of lighting throughout the space. So we've got all these different kind of exposures throughout, and then but also having pockets of light on each of these scenes. So we've got like a lighting fixture hitting every scene setup, and then also lights hitting him for his zigzag walking across moments so it's like we had a, a, a ton of lights up in that up in that ceiling i can't remember how many exactly but it was the most i've ever had on a on a job so it was yeah it was a really extensive setup that jacob my gaffer absolutely smashed and we worked through together and um, had had all the lights on dimmers so we could adjust them all specifically yeah and, um and then, yeah, kind of had this dir directional light coming from behind generally to kind of make sure we st still kept that kind of uh, contrast and the dynamicness mm. and shadows on Ren as well as 
kind of having enough light to see him by and 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 create this kind of mood that we that we captured um, yeah i i remember walking in just seeing all the different lights set up and going wow i mean this is this is a project right here but it was dope yeah. as you guys would walk through and try stuff and then you'd go you know let's turn that light off let's lower this let's increase brightness yeah. here and just like literally watching you guys go through step by step but it's dope it's almost like lighting up the yellow brick road isn't it like you got yeah. to like kind of pace out how you wanted it yeah. to be cast and how you wanted all the shadows yeah. and things and then right. and then lights were turned on and off throughout the process as well so yeah it's like as everything's changing the whole lighting setup is adjusting to to the movement and the positioning of cameras so that you're not getting spill and mm. you're not getting all these other factors so yeah it's, it's like it's like a drama production. It's like doing a play in real time, isn't it? Yeah. Because you are literally adjusting soundscaping and lighting right there in the mm -hmm. moment as, as yeah. things progress and action happens. It's really dope. Out of Cuba, 32, moving grams, growing kilos to tons. He's 33, filling warehouses with powder and guns. 34, turf war oh, with this nobody shot. to stop it. Blind eye from the popo inside of his pocket. Real quick, I didn't want to stop it again, but we got yeah. to stop it on that shot because that shot yeah, is just, great. It's just it's just beautiful. Can you just explain the execution of that shot, how that's able to be pulled off? Uh, yeah, so it's all in the motorized end of the um, steady cam that uh, Josh is operating up in the the gallows. So he's uh, operating the, the camera every time it spins and just and every time it kind of alters its uh, pitch. Um, so it's just like finding the moments that really matches so we have it happening at the beginning we have it here on the globe mm. and then we have it again in a minute for this next drunken section um so it's yeah he's adjusting that with a with a with a an attachment thing that's being read by the camera to to mirror that um i love how it ends on uh south america here for this bit as well on the on the map that just to match the whole that whole desk Hang on. And let's see. see it let's see it let's see it look at this was this planned? This was this is why I called you the cartel leader right here. Yeah, yeah. So it's um That is dope. I'm sorry, son. Bears your father. Had a heart attack. I'm sorry, he's gone. 36, getting pissed off, abusing his product. Mm. 37, eyes glazed, disposition demonic. 38, with a prostitute, a moment of passion. Heating up a silver spoon and then chasing the mm. dragon. 39, getting reckless and hungry for power. Daddy's words are still driving him to kill and devour. Makes a move against the cartel, but the strategy's flawed. They retaliate and leave him in a hospital ward. A bullet buried in his vertebra and one in his leg. The doctor to size and says I don't think you'll be walking again fuck how did uh Charlie know to cut the piano right there did somebody like signal to him or can he can he hear Ren that well all the way so, across because Ren's so pretty Ch far over now yeah so he that was one of the big problems is but he's got a, an in-ear that's linked to Ren's microphone so he right. can hear Ren singing so that they know the timings of everything and they can play off each other um, because yeah they really need the timings are just like impeccable so important sections. here and, and yeah really i mean key. this is this is what brings the full effect to life is when mm. everything just cuts out and then you yeah. just kind of you know the mood totally changes right here just the little things like the bottle falling over and the sound of that and things like that are just yeah they're such perfect elements perfect and like was there conversations about the best way to drop the bottle to get it to like make the best sound or roll correctly because there was a lot of attention to detail that i saw on, on yeah Super there's a Star. lot of things there was a lot of things but i think in terms of the bottle i'm not sure exactly or is that was, just one of those like it happened it's like yes yeah this is, it was this one is of just those, money it was one of those magic moments that audibly just works so well and in the visual in the corner as well of it rolling slightly it's just like you can't you can't really kind of make some of those those magic moments happen. It just has to happen. That's, yeah, they're so organic. Yeah, except you with that. Work. I, I saw that little string that you had attached to the globe to make sure it landed on South America, though. I'm not giving you that magic moment. Great reveal. 
Let me tell you a story about a boy named Jimmy. He was 40 and he cursed the words, mine, mine, gimme. 41, he wasn't walking. 42, not walking quickly. 43, never running round the pavements of his city. 44, inside a palace with a mountain of gold. But those riches turn to rubble when perspective evolves. Weighing heavy on his conscience is the value of gold. Lamborghini for a life, trading money for souls. Jimmy followed the code inside the land of the free. Put your hand inside the cookie jar, take more than you need. And his example is exaggerated versions of me. And it's a version of him. And it's a version of she. And it's a version of you. There's no escape. Escaping the blame, the way we live is parasitic. Fuck the money and fame. Call the music. Love that little cue in right there. In terms of having the strings behind them, can you just talk a little bit about what went into finding them and just, you know, getting ready for this moment? Yeah, so that strings moment always just gives me such goosebumps. Mm. And like, it's such a magical, powerful moment. And it was a way to have... It's like, how do you put them in a space that kind of draws you in towards Ren and his character in this moment, but also mm. is like, I kind of felt like it was, you wanted like an auditorium, like a Greek, a Greek amphitheater kind of feeling of them surrounding him in that circle and kind of like holding the space yeah. for his performance. Um, Should we go back and look at this shot? Let's go back and check it out. So just in terms of their blocking, mm. it's like really to hold that circle around him, to hold that space. It feels um, great. And it's I just love like... It. Even the yeah. initial reveal like this here. Yeah. That, That's a shot that, right there. It feels like that was the only way to block them mm. when it when, when it kind of like came to... We, ha we had a couple of other ideas and like do you f do it as like a triangle formation leading off him or do you do it more spread out or have him properly within in the circle of them. Um, but yeah, this is how it kind of fell. I like how they have depth too. It just yeah adds to the feel of that space, mm. giving it more. Yeah, they, they killed it. Do they have inner ears or were they just queuing off of his voice? Yeah, I think they... No, they're they're queuing off his hand gesture. Oh yeah, that's right. I remember he so, said, "I'm gonna I'm gonna count this in for you guys, and then that'll be the way that we we drop in." Yeah, yeah, um, that's dope. Yeah, because we needed that kind of key to to kind of line up. Hmm. Um, Call the music. This isn't entertainment. This is real life. That's what I mean. Though. I have to stop it. Stop trying to yeah. break things down. But it's just, again, it's just a great sense of just, it stopped. And I think the influence is like, you want to like dive right into it, right? Because mm. it's a big part. Yeah. But I think he's just got a great composure to just give that facial expression, you know, that just kind of yeah, locks you in. And mm. you just, it the gravity of the moment really like sinks in with yeah, that him. timing. And just like his expression sometimes to set things up, just... For me take it to another level it really broke the fourth wall in a in a whole other way there because yeah if, if him grabbing the camera is one thing but then also to look at it with that moment and give it a pause and like give it the time for everyone to process that and then yeah. okay right we're here we're with you um and, yeah and like it makes it a lot more palatable and also just like you go on that journey with him a little bit more hmm. you know agreed this is real life the way we live is lunacy community decline Hyperpolarized, always fighting, then we divide. Truth is less important than the money that we designed. Money's an invention. Politics from our invention. They all come from people's ideas. Did I mention? Borders an invention. Law and order fuel the tension. It leads to people killing each other. My solution. Got to take care of this tailored suit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> can we talk about the 45? Can we? You can hear the weight of the 45 as it hits right there. Yeah. This, is, there was... this, is, this is more than just a simple prop. 
yeah, it aligns with the song so much. It's such a hero prop. Um, and all all of the little ins and outs of, of this little section are just so intricate and so many things that people won't pick up on, but just was so much work went into like the fact that the 45 caliber because it's a replica gun in the uk you won't have a 45 caliber mag it's an eight mil caliber mm. loading mag so it won't fire um so he takes the mag out switches it with the net my ac gets the 45 caliber one then loads that up and then you see the gun go down he switches it again to have a mag that then he can put back in the gun so it's like off camera there's so many switching and movements happening that you you just don't catch um so which is just amazing that Ren can keep performance, keep yeah. kind of in that while he's doing all these trades with my assistant cameraman who's just trying to stay out of the way. Um. New new challenges to execution right there, but I love staying true to form because there's going to be that one person watching that catches yeah. that mag and goes, hang on a second, hang on a second. This is not matching up. So I like that you guys were like, no, we're going to stay true to course here. Everything is subject to change. We could build utopias if individuals were taught to use their brains. But if we teach kids in schools to always be sheep and put themselves before the herd, if there's more money for me, then there's no future I see where the humans survive with parasites inside a petri dish with cannibal minds. Mold will grow upon the surface and consumes till it dies. And our fate could be the same without this story to the wise. I think the thing is, and there's going to be so many reactors who talk about, you know, his performance. And I remember like showing up to see you guys. And my first view of him is just sat in this chair with a gun in his hand, just playing off of different ways of holding it, how he's going to do it. And like, you know, yeah. there's so much planning in his head that goes into this in rehearsal leading yeah. into this sort of flawless execution yeah. of it. I, I, I feel like there's never a, a movement that's wasted with Ren. Yeah, even just the bit where he's walking across and flopping the gun about in his hand, like really carelessly, like I, he was, he was I just, I remember really clearly, he's like, Sam, what do you think of this, this thing? Does it look all right? And I was like, it's absolutely amazing, mate. I don't know what you're talking about. It's like, it's such an amazing, like, little nuance that's just like plays off the, the way he's performing the, the words mm. and everything that it just really suits and it's just like he's he's so ocd and such a perfectionist about so many of these things and it's just like it's such a pleasure to work with because it's having someone else who's picking up on on those is just like is amazing but it comes through and i think what's dope like you said it's almost like he's continuing sort of conducting all of this as he yeah. walks us through and it plays off that ironically conducting with the handgun itself as he walks us through this it's another moment. moment another moment is like when he takes the jacket off his shirt's partly untucked mm. and it's like we had this conversation and he was like oh it was getting to him because slightly because he's ocd about this, this kind of things and i was like i love i love those moments because it's like something that shows what his inner character mm. is like it's like on the outside this character is a proper businessman who's absolutely smashing life but on the inside he's falling apart yeah you know it's like once that shell's kind of come off you like you're seeing a bit more of this character's inner turmoil um and he isn't so clean cut and isn't so successful um and it's little metaphors like that that come through in the details that is just like what makes this for me like one of the best things we've ever done absolutely oh i got apps updated no we're doing that later bad time for that jesus yeah <laughs> Forty-five. Jimmy comes home out of the rain, soaking wet upon a wheelchair, drinking again. He is everything he wants. He is fortune and fame. He's a fortunate fool with an unfortunate fate. With a forty-five caliber aimed at his brain. Forty-five, a fitting number, cause his age is the same. Here's the words of his father. It's such a damn shame. Then he presses on the trigger of a money game. I love the rain. And I think I think it really syncs up with how uh, Money Game Part 1 finishes with the oil and him doused in that and matching that with him being smothered in the rain and the nuances of well, the Well, even, even the lines itself, like, 
yeah. finger on the trigger of a month. Like there's even callbacks yeah. through the lyricism and how it's reflected. But yeah, in terms of this this rain, this amazing moment of the rain, can you talk a little bit about rigging this and coming up with yeah. this idea in the first place? So we've got someone on a tap into this hose pipe rigged system that uh, one of our team built, built specifically the day before in the rehearsal day. Uh, he, he threw it all together into these multiple hose units and we could we did one test the night before um and then we were like right we need to now have it dry so because when we did it the next day we could only do it once because we didn't have the time for the Mm. floor to be dried or we didn't have change of costumes for ren um so it was one of those ones where it was like it was a one one opportunity to get that um so no pressure no pressure at all but we really needed the water pressure to be there you know um so it was like, yeah, it was an all or nothing kind of thing. The timing had to be kind of perfect. Um, and yeah, we got, we, we nailed it. And also um, distance to make sure that our, our string quartet here doesn't get, uh, splashed. Yeah. So, and with the camera as well and knowing where our distance is and how close we can get, um, one of the string players, actually, if you can see on the left there. Yeah, it looks like the there's, hoses, there's some water going this way. Yeah, it hit her bow, so we had to buy her some new bow strings. Um, right. But uh, she did an amazing job of not moving. Yeah. Um, not reacting yeah, I see to the this. fact that it's hitting her. So, oh, yeah, she's getting, she's getting it. Which is just amazing. I think that's the thing is like the professionalism of everyone. Yeah, because you because everybody that, knows this is it. This is the shot. You have to get this. There's no coming back from yeah, it. Yeah, there's no so it's like the fact that they can do that and hold that is just like it's what you need and it's amazing that that can happen you know yeah i'll tell you what that's a that's that's one hell of a video are you proud sir yeah i'm i'm very proud um yeah very happy with it one uh one question yeah after going through it if there's anything you could go back and do differently well, one is there, and then yeah, there's mo- there's so many things, right? There's so many things, right? Like after I've watched it so many times, and I know so many things that I would want to tweak so slightly, but it is what it is, and that's part of the magic of making anything and any mm. form of art. Um, I think you strive for perfection, and then it's like, okay, yeah, this is this is the best we can do this time, and next time we'll we'll get it even closer. Yeah, um, well, I think you have to have a cutoff point too. You know, you, yeah. you can go through just unlimited edits and unlimited what ifs and all that but i think yeah. in your striving for perfection i think we all have to accept as artists like no it's never going to be 100 percent perfect but but they will this, make it half the time yeah they will make mistakes are half of what makes a, a piece of art so amazing like in so many of our videos there's so many happy mistakes hmm. um that you wouldn't get on on another take you know no matter, no matter how many times you do it again. So it's like some things you gain from mistakes mm. and some things you lose with them. Um, so it's kind of like you, you're weighing everything up and that's and that's the case with every shot ever. Um, yeah, so it's, it's a big balance. But there's, there's a few things in it that I, I would change. The main thing is I would just an extra day of rehearsing um, with all the extras in there so that they really got to know their performances and their their moments yeah well i guess that's what Um, you take for granted too is you guys all know your timings but the extras aren't as like immersed into the world of the song yeah necessarily as you guys have been going into it yeah and that they they were just friends of the producers and stuff so it's like they're not professional actors or anything um so it's really they're thrown in the deep end of the world so it's kind of like a whole new experience for them anyway um so i think that's like if we're using them again, I think yeah, a day of rehearsals with them would be amazing. Um, yeah, but but, yeah. but look, I mean that's the beauty of uh, of humanity is that we all are flawed. None of us are perfect, and I think 100%, 100%. I, I I think flaws help to create that human connection to a piece into art, and you know as long as there's that emotional connection and somewhere that it taps into, I, I think that's what this song does at least for me in this video is that it i feel like i've been on a journey like i feel like i've been through the lifetime of our character you know and and we've had such a rise and such a dramatic fall Mm. and at the end of it like any good sort of film or story 
you just kind of left on that final cliffhanger, you know, just that click, yeah. but we see nothing more and it just yeah. is left to the imagination from there. Yeah. That's beautiful, man. Well done. Well done. You. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. That's but Hey, listen guys, huge shout out to Sam for the time, for spending it with me, for walking through MG3, continue to watch this video, go get Ren's album, go support Sam. He and I actually have another project not even talked about, but stay tuned. Watch this space. There's another project on the way. I love you guys. Stay safe, stay positive. It's only Knox Hill. You know, I'll catch you again. Sam, sign him off. Cheers, everyone. See you next time. See ya. Yeah. Boop, boop.